Winchester News Online. I'm Felicity Houston. Today's top stories. Winchester dominates National Journalism Awards. I was thrilled to be here and I was really impressed. Residents fury over sex hotel. They need to understand it's not what they think. AFC Totten back in the FA Cup action. And Rhinos put their weight behind local charity. ITV News presenter Alistair Stewart visited the University of Winchester this week to present the 2012 Broadcast Journalism Training Council Awards. Students from Winchester were finalists for five out of nine awards, the most of any entered college or university. Sam Ashton was there to find out the results. From bongs, there are claims the killings happened after the to gongs, nerves tangled, breath held, and the winner is. Andrew Giddings. <laughs> Natasha De Silva, Dominique Jenkins and Carl Aitman. Alistair Stewart is no stranger to presenting the news, but on Tuesday he presented the BJTC Student Awards, hosted by students at the University of Winchester. Winchester students even left the event with some awards of their own. Andrew Giddings picking up the award for TV News Item of the Year, and Carl Aitman and Dominique Jenkins leaving with the award for TV News Day of the Year. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, the key thing about these awards is that it's not just, oh, well done, that was a nicely written or produced little piece. These are men and women who want to go to the business. They've got to be good, they've got to know what the values are, they've got to have morality, judgment, impartiality, the whole lot. Secondly, we got to see and listen to a whole range of clips that were just amazing, from sport to bowel cancer to a day on the river to somebody's grandma talking about her dementia and what have you. I mean, that's real quality work from a brilliant bunch of young men and women uh, from Lincoln, Winchester, Goldsmiths, across the piece. I was thrilled to be here and I was really impressed. After a troubled year for journalism, at least these young hopefuls have got off to the best of possible starts in what for many is still one of the most exciting and important professions. Sam Ashton, Winchester News Online, Winchester. After over a decade of disputes, a property developer has been given the go-ahead to build 2,000 homes on the Barton Farm site in North Winchester. Our political editor, Lewis O'Brien, reports. The last poppy on Barton Farm. After 14 years, the housing development for 2,000 new homes has been given the green light by Secretary of State Eric Pickles. The decision was confirmed after the threat of a legal challenge by developer Carla Holmes. This was after the initial decision was referred back to Winchester City Council last year. I think it's like everything. There are, there are pluses and minuses. I don't think anybody is very keen to see the countryside built all over, but you do produce more jobs. But there's a, as with everything, there's a price to pay. Carla Holmes are confident the venture will create up to 8,000 new jobs. The development, which will include a primary school, a nursing home, and up to 800 of the 2,000 homes built, will be for those on the council's housing waiting list. But not everyone is happy about the minister's decision. The Liberal Democrats feel that the judgment could have been made more carefully. But it's also a real disappointment because, you know, we've got nice green fields behind us and I've been of the view for some time that we should be looking at how we use space inside the town, such as car parks and whether we should be building on those before we start looking at building on green fields. The Save Barton Farm Group are still deciding whether to take further legal action over the Minister's decision. So for now, the Barton Farm saga continues to roll on. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online. A hotel for swingers, which opened in Southampton two weeks ago, is facing closure. The City Council is fighting to shut down Club Kiss after it opened without planning permission, but the owner claims that he's not harming anyone. Our chief reporter George Berridge has more. An ordinary house on an ordinary Southampton road. That is until you look inside Milton House, now running as a hotel for swingers under the name Club Kiss. But Southampton City Council has said that the club's opening without planning permission is a declaration of war. It's difficult to see who they haven't annoyed in terms of opening up this club. So they didn't so much declare war on the council, they also declared war on the residents of Wollstone who did not want this club. But this is not a conventional hotel and action must be taken against it. 
However, the owner of Club Kiss disagrees, saying his hotel is doing no harm and that the alternative, a student house, would be worse for local residents. No one's looking to get drunk and have any trouble. At the last venue we was at, we was there nine and a half years. In nine and a half years, we had the police out once. That was because on a Wednesday, the house got broken into. They need to understand it's not what they think. Mr Miller is unoptimistic about his chances of keeping the hotel open. The council is set to consult with planning teams on the issue over the next few months. George Berridge, Winchester News Online, Southampton. Plans for a door-to-door -door glass collection scheme have been scrapped after Conservative councillors said that it will cost £450,000 to run in the first year, which they claim is too expensive. Thomas Baxter reports. A war of words has started between Conservative and Liberal Democrat councillors in Winchester over recycling. The Liberal Democrats want a mobile glass collection scheme for the city that will cost £250,000 per year and another £200,000 for the collection vehicle. The number of bottle banks has been cut since April 2011 and Liberal Democrat councillors feel that a mobile glass collection scheme needs to be put in place. The Conservatives didn't like that idea. They took it out of the budget um, by various devious means and um, said that they would increase the number of places that people could take it to, increase the number of bring sites, um, which they've absolutely failed to do. Many Conservative councillors feel that the number of bottle banks in Winchester is sufficient. Basically, to be honest with you, it's adequate. It's a waste of money. It should be spent somewhere else and on the frontline services. This debate is set to continue, but the Conservatives are looking to shut the lid on this issue. Thomas Baxter, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Winchester City Council is adding restrictions to their last remaining free car park. The move follows a bid to stop so-called park and walk commuters so that the car park is available to use for local residents. So we want people to use the car parks on the outside if they can and then either walk into Winchester um, and, uh, or use the car park and rides. The City Council is also planning to build 300 new homes in the next 10 years. Conservatives say that this will help those on the housing waiting list, but Liberal Democrats are concerned that this fact is not being communicated to the public. Uh, they've been told that anybody with a piece of council land near them may have houses being built on it, and we don't feel that it's acceptable to treat people like that. Police have launched a campaign to promote cyclist safety after the level of injuries reported on UK roads increased. From the 1st of October, new signs will be put up around Hampshire roads to make motorists more aware of cyclists. The campaign is being supported by local councils and will be put into effect over the course of the next year. And now to the Sports Centre of Henry Lewin Titt. Thank you, Felicity. After Totten reached the FA Cup's second round and the final of the Hampshire Senior Cup, new manager Steve Riley has his work cut out to emulate the results from last year. Harvey Taylor went to the Testwood Stadium to see how he is feeling about the season to come. The FA Cup has given us many historic moments over the years. From Ricky Villa's goal in the 1981 final, Ronnie Radford's strike for Hereford against Newcastle, and Ryan Giggs' sensational goal against Arsenal. The FC Tottenham will be looking to create their own piece of FA Cup history today, especially given the fact of their heroics last season when they reached the second round but were ultimately defeated by Bristol Rovers. Today, Tottenham will take on Merthyr Town, having already defeated Swindon Supermarine and Blue Square Southside Truro City. Martha, however, will be confident in their own ability, having started the season unbeaten. AFC Tottenham manager Steve Riley gave us his thoughts on the FA Cup. I've done you know, two better than I did last season with, with, with Bashley, so um, I've improved on, on the last two seasons, really, as a, as a manager. So, um, you know, that was a fantastic season. It's just nice that we've, you know, we've got a, a, a chance of, of getting in the you know, the last 90 minutes before you play, play the big boys. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good for the club, it's, it's a good atmosphere, so I'm just, we're just going to try our best to, to be in the hat on Monday. It is, it's a great atmosphere, it's a good competition for, for fans, a good competition for players, so, you know, hopefully we can do the business today. Steve Riley is clearly feeling confident in replicating Tottenham's FA Cup success of last season. Harvey Taylor, Winchester News Online, Tottenham. Riley's men were in action on Saturday in the third FA Cup qualifying round. He will be hoping for a victory to be one game away from the first round proper. Liam Garahan reported on the action. 
AFC Totten welcome Murtha Town to the Testwood Stadium at the weekend for their FA Cup third qualifying round encounter. The Stags took an early lead when Jonathan Davies' corner appeared to curl all the way in, although on closer inspection it seems to take a touch off the town's Steve Williams, but Davies was happy to take the credit. A long punt downfield from Gareth Barfoot found Dave Allen, who picked out Gillespie with a delightful chip to finish emphatically. Gillespie's deft touch and controlled a pinpoint pass allowed him to return the favour for Allen, who made it three before the break. In the second half, Totten continued to press. Mike Gosney's winding run and shot forced a good reaction save from Cutland. And Gillespie forced the keeper to save with his feet. It wasn't all one-way traffic though, as Murphy Town scored through Ryan Proz's unstoppable drive, giving their travelling contingent some hope. Barfoot was caught napping in injury time, allowing Murtha to set up a frantic final minute, but Totten saw out the game to book themselves a fourth qualifying round tight against Cambridge City. Liam Garahan, Winchester News Online, Totten. That's all from sport this week. Back to Felicity with the news. And finally, a herd of painted rhinos will be released on Southampton as part of a celebration for Marwell Wildlife Park's 40th anniversary. Ellen Millard went to find out more. Rhinos are one of the most endangered species on the planet. Many of them now live in reserves with few free to roam the wild. Marwell Wildlife near Winchester is striving to ensure that rhinos and many other animals are around for years to come. So basically next year during the summer of 2013 we're going to have a trail of painted rhino sculptures, massive five foot by six foot throughout the streets and parks of Southampton. Obviously at Marwell we have our three rhinos here um, and the project itself uh, is to highlight the, the conservation work of, of, of Marwell uh, amongst the many things. Rhinos like these are targeted by poachers for their horns, hides and meats. The park has chosen rhinos in particular for this project due to their iconic image and Marwell's history of working with rhinos. In conjunction with Marwell's 40th anniversary celebrations, the park has teamed up with local artists to create rhino sculptures which will be sponsored by businesses and later auctioned. The money raised will go to Marwell Wildlife's many conservation projects across the world. The stampede of rhino sculptures will be charging into Southampton over the coming year. Ellen Millard, Marwell Wildlife Park, Winchester News Online. And we'll leave you with a taste of some other stories that are available on our award-winning website, winnell.co.uk. Goodbye. An innovative artist who works with sticks and branches. Which has been the scene of four collisions and several minor ones. The Salvation Army Booth Centre for the Homeless in Southampton has just started a new project. Well, which sees Residents were the first to benefit from the programme and have received access to some of the fastest broadband speeds in the country. Very clear exactly where housing is going to be built.